Hey guys, I've been hearing from a lot of people how great these pouch cells are that Battery Hookup has for sale. A few weeks ago he had them discounted quite significantly, so I picked up a few to try out myself. The number on these pouch cells is SPIM08HP. They are 8 amp hour cells and are rated for 200 amps continuous discharge and 400 amps burst discharge, which I believe is up to 3 seconds. I have 6 of them, so we're going to try doing some fun stuff with these. I want to see if it'll start one of my cars, and then if it does start the car, I may try starting my diesel pickup truck. But first, I want to get them tested first and see what the actual capacities are. When they ship, they ship with this tape over the terminals. And when I've seen other people posting about these, I've often wondered what keeps this from shorting out when this entire surface is metal. If you look closely, you'll see there's a thin piece of plastic here that goes between the casing of the cell and the terminal itself on both the positive and the negative end. Now once you have the protective tape removed from the positive and negative ends, you'll want to be very careful with these cells because again, the short burst discharge is 400 amps and you don't want to accidentally short these out. So before I get them in the testers, I want to check the voltage. So we have 3.50. 3.79, 3.50, 3.77, and 3.50. Now to capacity test these cells, I have to get a little bit creative since there's no charger that fits those cells. So what I did is I have three dead cells that measured zero volts. There's no uh, continuance between the positive and negative. So just in case, I did insulate them with some cardboard, and then I just made these jumper electrodes with alligator clips on the end. Alright, so I'll test three of them at a time, since the Opus only has four slots and I have six cells. So they are taking their first charge now. Once they're fully charged, they'll begin a discharge test. And then we'll be able to check back in a few hours and see what the reported capacities are. Alright guys, so we finished the first capacity test. We have 8,901, 8,410, and 8,325. The cell on the left still needs to charge up a little bit more before it's at 4.2 volts. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove these three cells and put on the other three and see where they sit. And here are the final three. We have 8918, 8079, and 8849. Uh, this cell is a little bit lower than all the rest, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's not a problem. We'll balance it out. Alright guys, so it's actually been like three or four weeks since I filmed the first part of this video. And it's time to get back at it. Uh, so here's the completed battery pack. Uh, so here's the six cells I tested. They're connected to two in parallel, and then those parallel sets are wired in series. Uh, so that gives us a rough 12 volt battery pack. To make the connections, I just use some standard uh, steel screws from the hardware store. In between cell packs, I drilled a third hole, and I actually have three screws. And then everything is covered with captain tape. There's three or four layers of captain tape on uh, each end of the connections here, just to make sure it's extra insulated. Originally I was thinking about using rivets and just drilling a couple holes and putting rivets through here to hold the cells together, um, but that actually didn't turn out very well. The rivets ripped through this aluminum pretty easily. So I'm not really sure the best route for going about this. Uh, maybe I need to get some better quality rivets or a better quality rivet gun. And then I wired just a small BMS harness uh, going to all four points of the battery for charging. So we're going to go ahead and charge this up. Like I said, it has been a few weeks since I filmed the first part, so I do want to make sure it's charged up to the top. Oh, yeah. 3S, just charge it 2 amps, normal balance, and start. So on the R charger you'll see the full voltage of the battery pack, the current charge rate, and then the voltage of the individual cells. Now while that's charging I think it's important to discuss the safety of using lithium ion batteries for a car battery and why you should not do it. So your typical lithium ion battery is going to have a voltage, a full voltage of 4.2 volts, volts per cell and an empty voltage of 3 volts per cell. So at 4.2 volts times 3 cells, you have 12.6 volts. When the battery is empty, you have 3 volts per cell times 3 cells is 9 volts. And that can vary a little bit. Sometimes batteries have a low cutoff of 2.5 or 2.75 volts, but 3 volts is pretty standard. The problem is that your lead-acid car battery is 12 volts. Once it drops below 12 volts, it's pretty much considered dead or close to dead. So once the car is started and the alternator kicks on, it's going to charge that lead-acid battery anywhere from, you know, it could be in the range of 14.5 volts to 14.7 volts. So if you're charging your 3S battery bank at 14.7 volts and you divide by 3, that's going to give you a voltage of 4.9 volts per cell, which is dangerously over the limit of 4.2 volts, and that's likely going to end up in fire or some other catastrophe. 
All right, so here's a vehicle we're gonna be testing this on today. Um, this is a 1.8 liter four cylinder engine. Uh, I have the positive going into the positive side of the battery. I have the voltmeter to show the current charge the battery. You can see it's about 12.5 volts. It's gonna connect the negative lead the same way I had the positive lead connected. All right, so now we have the negative connected. And I'm also going to put my clamp meter on. Put on an inrush setting. Now this clamp meter only goes up to 600 amps. I'm not expecting it to be anywhere close to that, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And again, as I explained earlier, once we start the vehicle, the alternator is gonna start charging this at 14.5 or more volts. Uh, so we're just gonna test it, make sure it starts, and then shut it off quickly. That way we're not burning up the battery. That was pretty cool. That sounded like a perfect start. It didn't even hesitate at all. That's, that's exactly how it sounds when the regular battery starts it. Checking our clamp meter, those batteries pushed 419 amps of inrush current. That is incredible. Um, so we're gonna have to go back to the computer and review the footage to see how far the voltage dropped. That'll be the interesting part here. And then uh, depending on the results of that, we may or may not test it on the truck. So I'll be back shortly. All right guys, so here we are. This is a 2006 Dodge Ram with a 24 valve 5.9 liter Cummins engine. This truck has two batteries. There's one battery over there and there's another battery over here. These batteries are both 12 volt. They are wired in parallel. Now there is a bit of an issue going on over here that I wanted to mention just to explain why I left the positive leads connected to these batteries. If you look here, there's a hairline crack in this clamp and I've known this was here for a couple of years now. I just haven't had a chance to replace it yet. Um, but I'm afraid that once I take this clamp off, uh, it's probably not going to go back on. So, so I left the positive on both sides of the battery, but you'll see on this battery, the negative is disconnected from this battery, and the negative is disconnected on the second battery as well. In addition to disconnecting the batteries, I've also removed control wire from the, from the grid control relay, uh, because it is cold out here today, and once this truck starts, um, this relay is going to kick on and pull about 200 amps from the battery. So I do not want that happening for this test, so the grid heater has been disconnected. So we're just going to see if it starts, and then like before, we're going to shut it down pretty much immediately. And again, please do not try this at home. This is just to see what the power capacity is of these batteries. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the negative lead now. And we'll connect the voltmeter and check the voltage drop. Approximately 12.5 volts like before. And again, the clamp meter is set to inrush. And here we go. That was pretty cool. So the clamp meter says OL, which is overloaded. That is unfortunate because we won't see what the starting current was. But it certainly did sound like it took quite a bit to start that motor. Uh, just for the heck of it, let's try it once more and see if it has enough energy left to turn it once more. That is very cool and it's pretty neat to know that these batteries still have enough left to start the engine a second time. Uh, but I'll have to check the video to see what the voltage drop was when I turned the key on and then as I was starting the vehicle. Once again, the clamp meter shows OL, which is overload. So we know it was pushing more than 600 amps for it to trigger this overload. That's the test of these batteries. And, uh, and the thing is, it's taken me so long to make this video. I've probably had these batteries sitting for about two or three months now. And then there's been about a month of time between when I filmed the first half and today. Um, but these batteries are actually on sale again. Battery Hookup has them for sale for $4.50 a piece. If you use coupon code BATTERY, it will take an additional 10% off, which brings the price down to $4.05. And I do want to add one more thing. This was not a sponsored video. I did purchase these batteries with my own money, but I do get a small commission when somebody purchases off the website through my link, which is in the description below. Um, and that, that small commission does help me fund fun projects like this. The whole reason I bought these batteries was just to see what kind of amps they could put out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. I am going to keep this battery pack around. If anybody else has any neat ideas of what I might test out with it, please leave those suggestions in the comments as well. Thanks for watching.